an odd analogy with the monkey being addicted to bananas, because you see, the thing is, some people, I mean, that can be very confusing, because you see, some people confuse chimpanzees with monkeys, you see, there's always a difference, and um, it's a completely different uh, group, and then you've got the gorillas, so you've got the gorillas, and then you've got the chimpanzees, and then you've got the monkeys, so people, you know, need to draw some sort of distinction with that, and don't worry about that, that will be discussed in further episodes. Just wanted to clear that up to you in case, you know, people were wondering, what, what was that? Anyway, so now let's uh, continue uh, watching some footage of the band uh, Frontline Assembly, and then we shall continue uh, watching the interview with the uh, band members, of, uh, with the other band members of Frontline Assembly. So uh, stay tuned, folks. You know, you're working and you're always putting out new stuff or involved with so many side projects and you don't really have, like, a, a lot of opportunity to show your work off. Like, um, I don't know, whether it be playing in a large amount of clubs or getting exposure through television. Like, do you find that disappointing? Like, do you feel that you've reached a large audience with your side projects on, even with your current, you know? No, I feel like um, I have a lot of stuff that I want to do personally and that uh, I put it off far too long and I've been... Uh, you know, I can't say no to touring and doing another Frontline album or anything, but it's just difficult because I, I would really like a few clones because I'm working on, you know, five different things at once, and they're all very personal to me and things that, you know, I'm not getting any younger, so I'd really like to try and focus on But when you feel that. like you've finished the completed product, do you feel that you're having opportunity to display your work? Do you feel there are venues like that? No, um, maybe well, in Europe. Venues necessarily place to play, but just publicity in general. Yeah, no, that's hard because you know, with my side projects, it's like no one, there's no support there. It's like there's no promotion or anything. I got to get out there and just play live shows and do it myself. Do you feel like you've done all this work and no one's listening? Sometimes. Sometimes, yeah, sometimes, but it, it, you just can't let that eat you up. You just do it because you love to do it, and the rest is gravy. So if you're if you're doing it to to get attention, go somewhere else, you know, don't talk to me, I'm doing it because this is what I love to do. Okay. That's good. So in a way, you kind of have to promote your own self. What about, I guess that goes for you, too. I mean, do you feel there are a lot of outlets? Well, you sort, of, you sort of make your own luck. I think um, if you it depends on how you want to push yourself. If you want to push yourself and try to make every single person happy, then you're going to have a big mountain to climb. But if you are happy with what you're doing, you know, creatively, then it doesn't really matter if you've got if you're number one on the charts or whether or not people are are, are into your music. You know, it's like you got to be satisfied first and foremost with what you're doing yourself. And, and like like Chris said, anything that comes after is just a bonus. So. Okay. Well, I mean, I guess it does suck. I mean, but don't you ever? I don't know. Just wish there could be more exposure in a way. Oh. I mean, do you which? Well, I guess naturally, but. Which like continent? Some fairy came along and waved their wand, and yeah, I had all these great you know, you know, how many viewers. This is going to reach. Yeah. This is the place to be. I'm sorry. Uh, I I was born in Canada, and I've lived in North America my whole life. But I have to tell you, uh, I have to say, you guys are a bit spoiled, and not anything that I've done has not spoiled you or anything I have to do with it. It's just that people have everything here in North America and in Europe. People go to a concert. They go crazy. They have a good time. They know how to celebrate life here in North America. There's just too much, too much TV, too much pop, too much, just too much complacency and trendiness. When you go to Europe, it's like if you like something, you show your support. Here in North America, if you like something, there's a lot of 
complacency and a little bit of like a lethargic response and sometimes it's a little disappointing because I know people are enjoying what we do and at the same time it doesn't seem like here in North America people are they're buying the record but they're not necessarily always lining up to go to the show and even the ones that do come to the show don't always necessarily go off but we go to Europe and it's just like people climbing over the barriers there's like you know fists in the oh, air passion. It's, it's, there's more passion in Europe, and I don't know why that is. I'm, I, I, well, I don't know why that is. I'll tell you why that is. You why? see, art in America is dead. I know. What a strong statement to say, but it is true. Because the thing is, most of the bands that are trying to get into the U.S. from other countries, they can't come because they don't get their visas, and they don't get their work permits, and in that way, it's tours difficult. get canceled. They don't come. It's very and then um, bands in America, they don't, I don't think they even have a lot of venues at times to even play with. They don't even... You know, they're struggling. They're probably bands, but you probably never heard of them. So it, it, it is a discouraging scene, I guess, especially when you see what is on regular network television. You know, if you see a music television station, you would think they would play music, and, you know, the more, you know, they would show what, what you think would be something interesting or some sort of artistic, you know, projects. But you never see that anymore because, you see, it's, you're living. You know, you ever seen that show, The Prisoner? Yeah. See, that's, that's what it is like, you see, that's really how the world is, it's just the whole world is this village and there are very few people that are actually have anything to show, so um, that's I'm, why. I'm not a number. I'm a free man. <laughs> <laughs> and as soon as you have something, you're, <laughs> what the? you'll be surprised. Wow. Man. I am actually, uh, you haven't. You left right on left field, man. Well, uh, <laughs> I wouldn't really can't think about that. <laughs> You need to see some of my um, sketch films. You need to see uh, Mr. Weird Man in action. I know, Wimp! I know the top of hot chicken distress! because you wanted to know if, I, if there are men, but there are men in me, and I am a free man. Uh, do we have any medication? Do you have any? Can you share any of that? Because uh, Yeah, we couldn't. Uh, no, I give you some. Here, come take it. Yum, 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 yum. Okay, you got it now. He's got it. See, the thing is, you don't have to take drugs to and anything to really loosen up. There's actually a secret chemical in your head once you're kind of in a certain relaxed stage and you're not very concerned about, you know, adapting. I call adapting. it exhaustion, yeah. You I call do. it sex. <laughs> Well, hey, you know, you guys can do whatever you want when I'm gone. Um, <clears throat> I'm not going to stop you. <laughs> do you guys get, like, a lot of groupies? Like, who gets the mo most groupies? Are they groupies? Wait a, minute, wait a minute. It's not about actually how many are there or who gets the most. It's actually who in the band is trying the hardest. And if that were the, if that were the case, it would have to be Jeremy. Oh, okay. He's the one who's out there. He's just... just just banging his head against the wall trying to find something interesting to do on a, on a regular basis. The rest of us are a little little more mature, a little more like, uh, you know, something is interesting and something is there and we happen to be single, which uh, I am single, by the way. Uh, then, you know, there's sort of, there's certain things that can happen. But, um, yeah, Jeremy, Jeremy is probably the most hardworking uh, uh, girl hunter of the band. But um, do you guys get a lot of girls coming to the shows? No, no, it's a, it's a technology band, so it's all guys and geeks with gear, and they ask you about equipment, and uh, yeah, it's it's not like some, you know, rock show or something like so that. Most of the fans are just sort of, um, do you get any annoying fans, like pests, who just, like, you know, just oh, really yeah. annoy you all the time? Yeah, there's a lot of people that don't know the concept of have, giving people personal space and whatnot, or being able to tell that I'm really fucking tired and I just want to have a nap. Well, like, what happens? Do you get disturbed, or just... 
Uh, kind of leech on to you. Oh, I, no, I've been literally like lying on the couch, like right there, and there's some fucking guy just asking you five zillion fucking things, and it's like, who the fuck are you, and like, why are you even back here? Security, get this guy the fuck out of here. You know, that happens once in a while, but not too often. I got in trouble. With, I, was like, yeah. I, I got in trouble in school when I was a kid for that. Yeah, I got Tourette's. I have mild, mild Tourette's. Sorry. But, uh, yeah. Oh, I didn't know there were that many people coming in backstage, though, to bother you guys. Oh, it just happens sometimes when they don't have good security. To this place, it's fine. But, I mean, yeah, oh. quite often you just get guys that just don't know when to stop bugging you, you know? Where's he coming from? Who know. let him in here? We'll never know. You should be looking at him. I don't know. Oh, I... <laughs> Hello again. So that concludes part two of the interview with the band Frontline Assembly. And, of course, it's very important to tune in and watch part three of this interview because what would be the point of part one and part two if you don't watch part three? Because, you know, it's, it's all about numbers. So you have number one is the first number, number two is the second number, and obviously number three is the third number. So, you know, that's how, uh, you know, se sequential numbers that's the whole thing about numbering. That's why we have the number system. That's why the number system was invented. You know, it's not like I'm telling all of you to, uh, you know, do it the way the Romans did it, like where you would have uh, the letter I to download part I, and then download part I, I, and then download part I, I, I. You know, obviously if I said that, I could understand that some people might be wondering what does I, I, I mean, and do I, you know, download part I, I, I before part... I, I, but being that we are now in the number system, I am quite sure that this whole numbers and these parts are going to be quite easy for all of you to understand and uh, watch in a sequential order, of course. So, once again, this is Miss Poopy Doody, once more, the entire report of the Boston Channel, this is this, I was this news. So, folks, good night, and stay tuned for some more content footage of the band Frontline Assembly. And, uh, oh, by the way, is anybody happy? Oh, my God.